Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video, we're gonna be making use of the Ceph pool that we set up in the last video, and we'll be putting a virtual machine into Ceph and making sure that we have high availability. That will mean that the node can shut down and hopefully the VM will seamlessly transfer to another operational node. This is obviously great for your home lab because you should be able to keep machines up that you want up, i.e. things that the family are using, things like DNS, it's always DNS, and anything else that's really useful, password manager, CCTV, etc. That will allow you to do some remote administration, upgrade components, turn it off, update, and everything in between. Anyway, enough waffling, let's dive straight into this one. Thankfully, it's not a long one. So a quick recap, this is now what the Ceph cluster looks like. And to get this started, we're going to create a new virtual machine. Now, you can do it via clicking the Create Virtual Machine button up there, but I prefer to use templates. So because I've got this template replicated on all of my nodes, I can simply click on one of them. For this instance, I'm going to choose this one here. This is just going to be using Cloudinit with version 2404. Now, actually, the hardware isn't quite right for this, but it's a template and I'm going to amend that. But the first thing I'm going to do is create clone. I'm going to make sure that it's a full clone. I'm just going to call this one Ceph test. And then we're going to click clone. Now, the reason this one doesn't work at the moment with Ceph is because if you look at the hard disk and the EFI disk, you'll see that it's on that local dash LVM. That's basically the NVMe drive that in that Proxmox is installed on, not the one that I chose in the last video for Ceph. Now that this one is completed, let's click on it and let's edit it. So I'm gonna click on the hard disk and I'm gonna do disk action and I'm gonna say move the storage. I'm gonna move the storage to that VM disk. Remember, that's the pool we created for Ceph in the last video. I'm gonna delete the source and then I'm gonna click move disk. That's now copying it from this local LVM on Sanguinius onto that clustered Ceph storage pool, such that when that's completed, task OK. And I'm quickly gonna do that for the EFI disk as well. I'm gonna put that one onto the VM disks. I'll delete the source. That's copied that over. And now with any luck, we should be able to head over onto the VM disks. Remember, I also created the ISOs template, which is shared as well. But if we look at the VM disks, this is on the same node, zero and one. Now, if this has worked properly, we should be able to go onto any node and go onto the same VM disks. Voila, there's zero and one, and also the top one. So now those two disks that are assigned to this virtual machine are present on every single node. Perfect. But there's one final thing that we need to do to make sure that we have high availability. We need to head back into the data center. Once we're in the data center, we have to go to HA, pretty self-explanatory, and we need to click add. Now on this, we're gonna click the Ceph test machine. That's the virtual machine that we just created down here. Now I'm gonna say maximum restarts one. I think that's the number of times it tries to restart this before it gives up. We could probably increase that if we wanted to. And the max relocation attempt, so how many times it wants to try and hop a node before it fails. I'm just keeping those as one to demonstrate a point, but you can obviously tweak those to suit your needs, especially if you have things like more nodes, for example. Now, the requested state here is I want it to be started. So it's basically going to try and honor that condition. A bit like where you do things in, say, Kubernetes, where you set a state and it tries to achieve it. A similar kind of principle here. So I'm gonna set it to started, and as you can see at the moment, it's not started. So when I click add, you'll see that it's queued on node Sanguinius. This should all start kicking into gear. It's requesting as balance, and where's it moved to? It's balanced based upon the resources on the cluster, i.e. how much CPU, how much RAM's available. And you can see that it's automatically moved from Sanguinius over to Abaddon. And the state is starting. So this machine should come online in any moment. So if we click onto this machine, we can go to the console. 
Now, ooh, I've just realized this is on VMBR zero. So actually this uh, cloud template, I should have changed that. If I actually click on here and I edit that and I change it to the VMBR one, which is my virtual machine trunk on 10 gigs and click OK. Now, if I head back to the console output, hopefully that should work. So now that says it's up and running. And if we head into the console, it's connected. And sometimes it's a little bit finicky with output, but yeah, there you go. It's automatically doing all of the cloud pulling of updating that image straight away, which is one of the key benefits of using a cloud init template. So perfect, we now have Ceph storage being used by a virtual machine so that we can do failover. Now, whilst that's running in the background and pulling everything, I want to actually go over to the Proxmox documentation and there's a command there that we can use to test live migration failover such that we should be able to run commands on this virtual machine and it should be able to live migrate with virtually no downtime. A great way to do that is probably to run a ping and let's just see what happens during that ping process. So a great way to do that is probably to run something like a ping and we'll leave that running. And then hopefully this ping will continue to run as we do the migration. So to test this out, I'm gonna head into the Proxmox shell and I'm gonna modify the following command. So it's HA manager, high availability manager, migrate and it's VM100. We know that this is running on Abaddon. So I'm gonna say move to Dawn. Now I'm gonna get up the other window just to make sure that that ping is still running. As you can see, the sequence number is still going up. So let's execute this command now and see if we do the live migration. That command's gone through and hopefully we should start to see this machine now move over to Dawn in real time. So you can see here on the left, the little aeroplane sign, it's moved, it's moved. There was a small disconnect there. Will it come back to life? It's reconnected and bingo, yeah, there we go. That sequence is still going. So there was a very slight interruption there, but basically we're back up and running. We've migrated from one physical machine over to another. Brilliant. So thanks for watching. I told you that one would be quick and painless and it comes with basically wrapping up all of the good stuff that we've done in the previous videos. We're now able to create virtual machines on our clustered Ceph file structure so that we can migrate VMs between nodes in the event of failure or graceful shutdown or any maintenance we want to do, safe in the knowledge that there should be basically no disruption to our home lab. This is really awesome and I'm going to be making a lot of use of this in the coming weeks and years. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you're going to do and how you're going to set it up. As always, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the sub and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.